Another aspect of the Book of Mormon that I keep coming back to, because the more I learn Hebrew, the more impressive this really is, is its genuine Hebraisms and the Semitic character of the background in the text itself. There's dozens of different types of Hebraisms in the Book of Mormon. And I think it's fascinating that these same types of Hebraisms have not been found in the Solomon Spaulding manuscript, and they have not been found in Ethan Smith's view of the Hebrews. As Elder Holland so poignantly said in his conference talk, these are sham theories trying to be the origin of the Book of Mormon, and the Book of Mormon is nothing like them. The Book of Mormon accurately reflects its Semitic backgrounds with these Hebraisms. These are clues. These are echoes and evidences in favor of the Book of Mormon's Semitic character. The cognate accusative is one of the very most powerful and interesting of the Hebraisms because with the cause cognate accusative, the way it is said is so odd compared to how we say it today in modern English. The way it's said in Joseph Smith's day is simply not reflected in the Book of Mormon. A cognate accusative is a direct object noun that shares the same Hebrew root with the verb in front of it. For instance, in the Book of Mormon we read of the many instances of the cognate accusative, here's one in 1 Nephi 2.23 that says, I will curse them even with a sore curse. Instead of just saying, I will curse them sorely, or I will sorely curse them. It says, I will curse them even with a sore curse. Another cognate accusative, behold, I have dreamed a dream. Another one is, they yoketh them with a yoke. Another one is, I will work a great and marvelous work. Another one is to build buildings. Or, this is the desire which I desired of him. That one's in Enos 1.13. What a weird way to put it. This is the desire that I desired of him. Instead of saying something like, this was my desire. But that's not a cognate accusative. It's good English, but it's not a cognate accusative. <laughs> in the Book of Mormon, the cognate accusative is properly reflected. They work all manner of fine work. You judge righteous judgments. Not judge righteously. You judge righteous judgments. That's beautiful reflection of the Hebrew cognate accusative. Or they sing the song, Alma 5.26. The many ands, the repetition of the definite article, the construct state, the whole theme of the plural amplification, the compound prepositions, the parallelism, the chiastic structures, the, uh, the fascinating aspects of the Hebrew language with the repetition of the possessive pronoun, with the emphatic pronoun, these various types of Hebraisms found throughout the course of the Book of Mormon record indicate a Semitic background. It's not in the 19th century literatures because it didn't come from 19th century America. The more you learn Hebrew, the more powerful these characteristics come out. Angela Crowell has done some magnificent work in the Zarahemla record on so many of the Hebraisms, John Twetness, Donald W. Perry, uh, John Welch, several Hebraic scholars now, um, Stephen D. Ricks, so on and so forth, several of the scholars have found so many dozens of different types of Hebrew characteristics through the translation that it is inescapable that the background of the Book of Mormon truly is Hebraic. Now, the authors themselves indicated, they said, we would have written in the Hebrew, but we changed it. So they wrote in the Egyptian, but they also changed that, and they called their own changes to the language 
They called that the Reformed Egyptian. Not that it was a language out there among the world's peoples, but it was handed down on the plate of the Nephites in their specific lineage history. The language characteristics, the clues that we find in the Book of Mormon, demonstrate that Joseph Smith was translating an ancient record. He wasn't fobbing off from any of the literatures that was available to him. 